It's just like, you know, I, I was a freelancer, say, four or five years back, and uh, most of the people didn't know what freelancer was. They thought I would work for free because I was a freelancer. So the ecosystems enable you, a lot, you know, a lot of things. You meet the right kind of people, and it's fashionable to open up a startup in an ecosystem because you're not considered an anomaly. You're, this is considered a normal. If you say that you want to open up a startup in Tiha, in Bangalore, or in Silicon Valley, that would be a cool thing. That would be a normal thing. But if you, let us say, you want to open up a startup in, let us say, uh, Ambala, it would not be very cool because the kind of people around you would not be into startup ecosystems. Uh, it's not only about the people uh, mindsets that, that, that make a difference, it's also a lot about uh, serendipities that can happen. So if you are in a place where there is a very high chance of bumping into an investor, bumping into a mentor, bumping into someone who, is, who has already built what you are trying to build, serendipities are bound to happen. So that's why our next session is on building ecosystems Lessons from Hyderabad to Austin. I would like to invite on to the stage the chair of the next session, Srikant Sundararajan, partner of Venture East. Srikant Sundararajan, partner of Venture East. And uh, meanwhile, also also just invite the panelists, Srinivas, Kolipara, Rahul Narmekar, Priyanka Ahuja, Eric Azule, and Hekani Jakhalo. The next session, I request all the panelists to be onto the stage. Shrikant is already here. Can we have a big, big round of applause? Uh, so actually, uh, we are waiting for the panelists to come in because uh, everything got delayed. But what I'll kind of try to give you a small thesis is for any kind of ecosystem to work, you need four or five very vital ingredients. Okay. The first thing is basically you need academia. Without academia, you won't be able to create anything in terms of innovation and leadership. The second thing is you need the industries. If industries are what it is are there, it actually kind of provides impetus to entrepreneurs. The third thing is obviously government support. And the fourth thing is investors. These four things have to actually be all together very, very closely. Having actually... Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Having grown up in the valley, these things are beautiful uh, from that perspective. You look at the state of California, you look at uh, the US uh, government, they actually fund a lot of programs. You have brilliant colleges there, there like Berkeley, Stanford, Singular, uh, the UC system, all very, very close by. You can walk into any professor's uh, office informally and have a discussion. Students are like always coming up with different ideas. Entrepreneurs are available, which is senior entrepreneurs, which is beginning to happen in India now because now we've seen some companies do well and people have exited. I think we have at least yesterday, Harvinder was here. Uh, he's a successful entrepreneur. We have Bhavik here today. We have uh, Ashish Gupta who's also exited from his company. So these things are very, very important for the ecosystem. Right? So from that perspective, I'll also paint a little bit of a kind of diverse story. Everyone keeps saying Bangalore is the ecosystem, Bangalore is the ecosystem, it's really good. In my opinion, Bangalore is not the greatest ecosystem, but it lucked out because it had good weather initially and a lot of the MNCs actually kind of came there. So you've got this group of people and talent uh, which actually kind of took off on its own. The government of Karnataka was not as vociferous about it. I think the best ecosystem in India today is actually Hyderabad and the state of Telangana because all these four or five ingredients come together really well. It's all on one street, it's all close, and there's a lot of delegation. So what I'll do right now is I'll just pass it on to, from Srini all the way this way, uh, since it's Hyderabad, and Tiha, and all bunch of good stuff, take it away. And tell me what's so good about that ecosystem. Everything. <laughs> Um, first of all, why are we sitting spread out so far? Can some of you come to the front? Please do, please. We don't need everyone to be scattered so far, do we? So I'm going to excuse myself right now. I'm going to get up halfway through the panel because I've got a flight to catch. Um, but answering Srikant's question, how many people have heard of Tihan? 
Okay, there are a few. <laughs> so basically, we're a not-for-profit organization. Um, our mandate is twofold. One is to turn Hyderabad into, a, into one of the top startup cities in the world. And the second is to help startups to scale. Um, the reason I mention that is because I think that's one of the differentiators between Hyderabad uh, and Bangalore and a few other cities is that we took an, an organized approach to see how do you build an ecosystem. So Bangalore is way ahead of us in many factors. Uh, but it happened organically and it's very scattered. What we've done is we've figured out who are the different stakeholders that exist from the corporate world, from the education world, from the startup world, uh, get, got them all together so that every stakeholder gets what they need. Um, the fact that we're a very tight-knit community, we understand what each of them requires, I think is the differentiating factor. And one of the things that I was here to do was to try and bring that to Chandigarh as well, and Mohali. So, um, short answer, uh, the reason that we're a great ecosystem is that we're very, very closely knit, um, and we'll talk more later. So moving on to Eric, um, I know you kind of recently opened up your incubation center in uh, Delhi. It's an interesting location, but like, uh, I guess there are reasons for it. So what are you seeing? Um, how is, what is the potential of say, the, uh, doing something like this in Chandigarh versus what's happening in Delhi? Uh, your views. So for us on the ecosystem, I mean, and using the experience of Austin, I mean, you first mentioned about the triad of what you have to have. You have to have a very strong academic uh, for the intellectual property and for the new graduates coming up for a workforce. You have to have the uh, corporate support and you have to have the political support. But that's just the basics. Because um, if you don't have that, you don't have anything. But if it were just that, there'd be a lot more great ecosystems out there. And there's not, right? It's not just put those three together and boom, you have an ecosystem. Um, and what we came to Delhi, why we started up Nexus uh, in Delhi was because when we talked to a bunch of different stakeholders, they kind of echoed that. They said, look, Delhi has many don't think. We've got plenty of great world-class institutions. We've got some uh, growing funding. We have incubators, accelerators. Um, we have all of this. We have the government, of course. But all of these uh, are working in uh, fragmented way, and they're not working in tandem. And I think that goes to your point, is that you really need to have a much more tight-knit community. So once you have those three sectors together, and you have some people that have already been successful in their startups, um, and I hate to use this word because it's so overused, but you've got to have a group of people that are ready to give back to the community. Um, and people that have the success stories and are ready to come back and say, listen, I'm ready to help you in the next generation. It doesn't have to be all altruistic. It could be for their own reasons about what's the next biggest thing. But to me, that's the difference between having all the components of an ecosystem. Um, and actually having a functional ecosystem. Like I said, again, I use that as an Austin because if it were just the money, if it were just government, and just having universities, uh, there'd be plenty of cities in the states that would be much better known for startups all around the world than there are now. And there's that, usually that's something special uh, that people want to live there. There's excitement, and that they know what's starting off, if they get the money, but there's also people that can mentor them and can hold their hands and that they actually want to start in the startup community. And that's a very big difference between just having so in Chandigarh, I've seen that the enthusiasm here um, is an extremely important part. It's a nice city as well. It's very planned, you've got the great logistics, you have great weather. I love breathing fresh air. That's nice, uh, as opposed to coming from Delhi. Um, so those components are there. I mean, it's just starting out. Uh, nobody's going to say that they have a world-class incubation or innovation center yet. But I think you've got the greater, you've got the good foundation on this B, uh, with Thai, uh, with partners like uh, Tia, they're coming in and telling me how best practices work. So I'm actually very optimistic about having Chandigarh come in and start growing into a sort of hub because it does to me have the uh, different components of what you do. Thank you. Sure, sure. Um, one of the things that I, I do notice in India, um, you know, in the US, giving back is an overused term. It actually isn't used that much in India. And one of the things that I've seen in, uh, in early stage ecosystems, including here, as I've spoken to many people, is there are stuff, go there is stuff going on, but it happens in silos. So you've got to connect with everybody else out there, and not just think about what, it, what helps you. But if you're doing something, help them back. You know, the word that is overused is ecosystem. What does that mean? It means that every person sitting in a seat in this room has to give back to other people doing similar things. That's the ecosystem. It's not random organizations that have nothing to do with you. Every person here has a role to play. So go out, see who else you can help with whatever you've learned, and ask for help from other people regardless of whether it's your organization or some others. 
that I think is what takes uh, what makes the difference. It may be counterintuitive. At the beginning, you're just saying, "How am I going to help an organization that may be a competitive organization?" Um, but that is really the difference between having an actual functioning ecosystem and not. Um, and that's exactly my point with the Delhi is that all those pieces are there, but they were working in a fragmented way, and they're saying, "This is mine," and they weren't connecting as much as they could with other organizations, other startups, other institutions as well. And so what we did at Nexus by having this non-profit business center and innovation hub was just a small way of trying to say, look, if we can bring people together and start making those connections and showing best practices in the United States, combining with best practices in India, that is really the start of helping the ecosystem. It's not going to be done in a week, not going to be done in six months, um, but at least we can start laying down the first foundations for that. Thanks, Eric. Uh, so actually, I'll jump to the investment side and get Rahul to speak a little bit. Uh, one of the things as an investor, uh, which actually is very confusing, is that we have a lot of accelerators and uh, incubators and things like that in every city in India. Some of them are basically just places for people to go, kind of just camp. And others, like t Hub, which is what I'm seeing is like you have this whole notion of giving, up, giving back, where you have mentors. Like I'm basically, I would say, a third generation entrepreneur, very, very old, at the age of 56. We had a few yesterday who are second generation who've done their first startup, they've done really well, and they're actually participating. We have early stage investors who actually kind of mentor these companies quite a lot. So Rahul, in your opinion, what sets certain incubators apart and what should be the model from an investor standpoint? So, I mean, I've been a very recent investor. It's just the last 18 months that I've been in this journey. Two, three things stand out. One is, I think, it's mostly a top-down thing that I see. The founders of those systems define the sort of culture that these incubators or accelerators have. Also, in certain cases, the reasons of their existence. So we have a lot of ego. So I say we don't have an ecosystem in India, we have an ecosystem in India. <laughs> so it's a lot of vanity stuff out there first. And most cases, uh, mentorship as a word is not understood in India. So. so when I travel, I meet a lot of young startup entrepreneurs. They all write to me saying, I want you to mentor me. But nine times out of ten, they want me to write them a check. Until the time they have a hope, ke boss, check me lega, to you are the one, otherwise you are whatever. Secondly, uh, one of the reasons we got into doing the Indian network is also that there is no organized matchmaking of a mentor and mentee. So a lot of times, even at conferences like this, you'll bump into somebody who says, I want to talk to you. And after about half an hour, and unfortunately, as Indians, we don't come to the point very fast. So it takes about half an hour for you to realize that, oh, you need a tech founder, a mentor, but I'm not a techie. So can I now sort of connect you to this? Secondly, uh, I have kids who will reach out to me at 2 a.m. They'll send me a WhatsApp business plan, saying, can you take a look at it? And then the last minutes in all caps, reply ASAP. Then I have people who will uh, bother me and keep chasing me and for stuff like, oh, can you connect me to Vijay Shekhar Sharma Paytm because he should absolutely buy out my startup. And I will say, please write me an email with the contacts and I'm happy to make Then why don't you give me his number? I said, I, I'm sorry, I can't give his number. No, why don't you give number? They get very worked up. So I think from a, from a I, I know we are a very young system, ecosystem, so we need to mature them. As Shini said and Eric said, the concept of giving back is still more of taking back is the is the objective. A lot I see. Yes, but we are making progress. What it was in 2009-10 when we started, one of my first startups actually flipped out because we did not have any credible mentors to go and ask questions. And I think the media needs to start celebrating different things. We, as all the startup media that I see, unfortunately, we only glorify fundraise. In fact, today if you raise less than 100 million dollars, nobody's going to talk to you. We don't celebrate bootstrap startups. And we don't celebrate people who are genuinely giving. That is true. All very, very important points. We've actually highlighted some of that uh, in a different round of questioning. So I go on to Priyanka. Uh, you've been part of the ecosystem in Delhi. In general. Uh, I think this whole thing which Rahul was saying is happens more in Delhi. Because the guy will kind of pay you to get whatever he wants. How is it actually? I mean, you, you've been uh, involved with Startup Tunnel, and one thing I've noticed is you started focusing on Bitcoin and a few very specialized startups or areas. 
uh, give us your experience uh, in terms of what are the challenges. Uh, if you were to do something similar in, in the Chandigarh, what what would it would take? Sure. So, like you said, it's it's been around for four and a half years since the time I've been in the startup ecosystem, and uh, all this while I've been working with Startup Tunnel. Uh, for all, if you guys who do not know, Startup Tunnel is a early stage acceleration program. Uh, we support early stage startups. Um, so, in the last four years, I think, and I, I'd have to reiterate what Srini and Eric have already said, the basic challenge is that people are actually working in their own silos, whether they are startups or whether they are ecosystem players like us. We all are working in fragments, we are scattered across uh, Delhi as a city and even um, 